Well, as you can see, I've uh, changed into my mullions. Um, if you're ever going to be sailing in around the Irish Sea, I really, really recommend them. Uh, because, boy, oh boy, it done half get gold out here. <laughs> I've got to go get changed into mine. And Bev's going to go and get changed into hers. But it just gets so cold. But um, because we bought mullions um, and their fisherman gear, um, you're not having to spend the kind of money that you'd expect for thermal stock. Uh, it was a good couple of years ago, but we paid £120 uh, per suit. And realistically, I, in my opinion, that's worth every single penny because I wouldn't want to be doing a night sail, which is what I'm going to be doing, in anything less than this. Well, we had a uh, brief moment of excitement there. We um, had a couple of trawlers or fishing boats or something coming toward us and uh, we had to work out whether we were going to pass in front of them because, like a lot of fishermen, they had their AIS turned off so we had no idea what they were doing, did we? No, no. So we used the age-old technique of just looking and judging lines of uh, pieces of deck infrastructure, see how they lined up and how they changed on our approach. And we determined pretty quickly that... Um, we were going to pass well in front of them, so that's done. And the second one's now passing behind us, so I think we got that one right. Ah, anyway, Skipper Gainer's period of watch is over because I've just done the log entry, so it's my turn now. Well, I'm going to take this all the way to. Um... Hang on, I don't think people can hear you, you know. Okay, well, I'm going to, I was going to take this all the way to uh, this big pillar that I can see. <laughs> okay. Apparently the idea is that she's going to con the boat down to we get the South Rock, but that's another hour away. Looks closer, but I don't think no, she... I'm not talking about South Rock, I'm talking about this one. Okay, yeah, go for it. Whatever pillar this is. Yeah, the one that's opposite South Rock. Yeah, it's not an hour away. No, it's 45 minutes away, but I never argue. If somebody else prepared to stand to watch, I get a shorter one. <laughs> scaries it's been a long time since we were here last um, we've decided to anchor so we've got the anchor ball up and so happy about this we've got the uh, Irish courtesy flag we however do not need to put up the quarantine flag because we have come from the island of Ireland there's different rules if you come from the UK uh, and the island of Ireland, but because we've come from the island of Ireland, we do not need to put the, the uh, quarantine flag up. But, oh, despite everything, we are actually hit where we wanted to be at the right time. It has meant that we've missed Scrankford, but say la vie. Well, behind me is uh, Scaries, um, and it's done us really well as an anchorage. Uh, we had the wind from the south, which means that the wind was from the land. Um, but um, every now and then, you'd get swell from the sea. Um, so, you know, there was a little bit of swell. But other than that, it was fine. Uh, but I certainly wouldn't want to be here when the, um, this is, um, you know, the land behind me is a, is a lee shore. Uh, last night we went out to a local restaurant and I have to say it was really good. Uh, the restaurant uh, will be just below because my memory must be getting shot. All I remember it being blue <laughs> something. <laughs> but it was really nice. Uh, we've met up with some sort of friends and uh, we're going to... Um, Go to Malahide because that's where their boat is. So Beverly, seeing as we don't know where to get our weather forecast from, what are we doing for our weather forecast today? We're taking a reading off the top of the mast <laughs> and we're going to look at the direction when we stick our head up. And the general weather is 
foggy visibility poor. <laughs> Hoping to improve. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, uh, dear. But the passage today is so short, I'm only taking the high tide and putting it in just literally a one line. We're only doing eight nautical mile passage. Um, as long as visibility stays upwards of about half a mile, we'll have enough information uh, to see where we need to go. Um, there's a passage between two islands. It's not particularly narrow. And um, while we're not going to see the leading line because of the fog, uh, the leading lines are marked in the chart and we have the depth gauge so we can follow the contours. So that's what we'll do in that instance. And then it's uh, a little run down the coast and hopefully into Malahide Marina. Yippee doo -da. Morning for it then. <laughs> yeah, um, I was just thinking back to uh, our rule of twelfths because we're just going between uh, the scaries and this is where we practice the rule of twelfths. Uh, but now, this time, I'm using two mathematical tricks. First of all, is to go over a contour and basically pre dock your depth at the contour um, and then that gives you an accurate um, setting on your tidal height that day and then the other mathematical trick I'm using is that um, half tide it, for a sinusoidal wave is always the same so that um, in this area it's always about 1.5 metres I'm going to have to get Beverly to look for pots Alright, back to, back to work So during the passage, you were talking to us about um, following contours and half tide heights. Would you like to expound on that, please? When I was uh, getting bashed about, <laughs> I uh, talked about two little rules of thumb that Beverly and I have found out uh, about uh, calculating tidal heights. The first is... Um, when you go over a contour, you can use your depth gauge to basically read off your tidal height. Now, the advantage of that is that it, it allows for a, um, atmospheric pressure. The disadvantage of that is, let's be honest, is your chart accurate? And is the place of the contour accurate? But it will give you a rough guess. The second rule um, works when you have sinusoidal tidal curves and uh, basically what it means is if you take the height at of high tide take away the height at low tide divide by two and then add the low tide you'll actually find if you do it um, for your area that, that the, the figure that that comes out is roughly the same. Now, in uh, the Dublin Bay area, it's uh, the lowest it goes to is 2.1, and the highest it goes to is 2.4 metres. Uh, so half tide is between 2.1 and 2.4, regardless of if you're in the neap, springs or anything. Um, Liverpool. So, so then, would it be fair to say that if you're out there sailing any time after half tide, you're guaranteed at least 2.1 2 2 metres of, yeah. of tidal height, and it doesn't matter when you're going. Um, and Liverpool Bay, for instance, um, the minimum tide there, regardless at half tide, is 4.8 metres, um, and it goes to 5.2 metres. So it's not very far, you know, difference at half tide and it just gives you 
a rough estimate as to what's happening at half time. Well, uh, we've arrived to Malahide Marina and it's a tidal marina. The tide runs right through here. And as you can see, these pontoons have solid concrete underneath and the tide is having to push its way under this side and pop up under that side and uh, <laughs> get some rather interesting patterns. But um, coming in here, it's come in at um, high tide. The advice the marina gives you is to duck the depth you have at the fairway buoy by two metres and that will be your clear water all the way up the passage. Um, we did that and yeah, they were absolutely right as you would expect them to be, this being their marina. So we've arrived here, we're going to spend a couple of days here, we're waiting for this wind to die off. We're going to go and look around the place and uh, just enjoy ourselves. And on top of that, if you are stalking us on AIS, then if we're in your area, do get in touch with us and we'll see if we can meet up. And we're really, really pleased to say that uh, one of our strongest followers, she's always supporting us and things like that. She's been absolutely fantastic to us and her, her husband, they've both been absolutely brilliant. They turned up um, yesterday and we had a great time. So we'll show you a little bit of that and give you an introduction to their channel. Well, due to an inexcusable cock up by the camera person, <laughs> We got one second of footage yesterday when we were on board Wave Dancer. Okay. Thank good. you. And um, it's not really good enough. And so we've lost John and Yvonne's piece to camera, so I'll have to do it for them. Um, there are a couple who have sailed around the southwestern coast of Ireland from here. And to a certain extent, they are part of the inspiration for the journey we're making now. We've certainly seen where they've gone and it's made us want to go there. And they've given us lots of useful advice and they've been really, really helpful to them. And Yvonne has just started her YouTube channel last year to document what they were doing. And I have watched lots of it, which is why we're doing what we're doing. So if you get a chance to go and ha have a look at their channel, it is, there's a link to it up here. We have Dancer Westerly Fulmar. And um, give them some feedback and um, hopefully it'll inspire you to want to go to these areas too. Beverly and I are here at Malahide Marina. It's a lovely place. It's got great facilities. Um, the town is really good and has a real holiday vibe about it. The staff at the marina are really nice. The only thing that you have to be a bit funny about is uh, when you're going into the toilets and stuff, if you want a bath, the, the lights are right at the door as you go in and not actually at the bathroom. This thing down here is a depth gauge, a tide gauge, which shows the people in the office how much water there is in the fairway for boats coming in and out along the estuary entrance. Um, it's a bit different from when the harbour master was cleaning it yesterday, but I can tell you now that there is about four and three quarter metres of depth in the fairway. And the rule of thumb, if you, because when you're out there, you can't see this, is whatever depth you have at the fairway boy, deduct two metres and it should be the same number as what's on this board. Yeah, I can see the rain, everything. Yeah. I'm glad we're not over there. We get absolutely soaked. <laughs> well, as you can see from where this is now and where it was yesterday, there's a lot of tidal range around here and quite a difference between high tide and low tide. So only come in near high tide because the other issue is that it does run through the marina and it does make life difficult for the boat. Well, we're in our final afternoon in Malahide. The um, tide will turn in a couple of hours and we'll be going out in it to hopefully anchor out behind Ireland's Eye. And we just hope to have a couple of relaxing days doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> and if you believe that, you'll believe anything. <laughs> so it's pea and ham soup for now. Get the boat prepped and then um, we have a quick trip to make to the fuel dock. Um, that big run the other night the head on winds plus the big run down from um, Scaries a couple of days ago. Used up most of, well not most of our diesel but we certainly used up plenty of it. So we want to top that up before we go off and it probably doesn't hurt to have a, a diesel receipt. Yes. 
but that's only for something else. Well, since we're a boat from the north and you don't know, they just might want to inspect your tanks or just see your paperwork. So having a diesel receipt's no bad thing. Might never happen, probably won't happen. But if you have the paperwork, you have it. So for now, it's pee and ham soup and get the boat prepped.